Welcome back, Stingers. Here we go. Say hi. You know the drill when you come in. And I'm going to read the energy in the room. So tonight, we're going to be here for a while. And so there's a lot of things that I want to talk about. There's a lot of things that I kind of want to go in. I want to go in about. And so I'm going to take my time. I already had dinner. I already took my bubble bath. I'm in my night clothes. Come in and say hello. Hey, you. Lynn Trail, you're number one. <laughs> Sexy Tower was number two. Shalem, number three. How are you? Here we go, guys. I got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, but I'm comfortable. Get comfortable. Hey, Steph. <laughs> hello, hello. Come in, come in. Oh, let me let me read this energy. I, I, I have some notes here because I want to make sure that I don't... Let me fix this camera. I don't want you to see too much because I have on <laughs> my sleeping attire. <laughs> and she's a little bit, you know, rated 18. All right, guys, come in. Let me move my chair back. Ooh. There we go. There we go. Come in. Ooh, let me fix this. All right, guys, I'm ready for you. <sighs> I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, say hi and like when you come in. There's 20 in and four likes. We got a problem. I'm here to give you some info. All right, let's see who's in the house. Let's see who's creeping in here. There's always some sneaky. I, I think June is the month of sneaky. Thank you, Sexy Tara. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we appreciate your offerings. <laughs> yes. Come on in. Hi, Amanda, Chantel. Hey, Rob. Queenie B. Let me see who's in the house. Let's see who's hiding in here. Some people like to hide and then put comments under the videos. We're going to talk about tonight, we're talking about why people brag about having Scorpio placements. And it's going to go deeper than that. Because, you know, we, got, we, we, pull, we like to pull the scabs off, so to speak. And we're going to talk about this false sense of power, projection of power. We spoke about the mass the other night, uh, about why we give ourselves labels, why we're trying to project so we can hide under the covers so people don't see, see the real us. As I uh, go through, I'm going back to kind of review my third book that I just finished called I'm Not Crazy, A Scorpio's Guide to Embracing the Dark Side. And... In the book, we talk about this so-called, and I put it in quotations because it is all of me. I have no dark side. Whatever you get from me, that's what you get in, in, it, in my entirety, right? And so we talk about that. I go through that in the book, and I talk about masks and walls we build and things like that and why we have certain triggers and why we have mechanisms and you know all these different things. And through... Going back to read some of these chapters, I'm discovering a lot more layers. And, uh, you know, this whole entire, which I think has become recent. It's, you know, I don't know. I think within the past 10 years, there is this urge to really project, you know, these Scorpio placements that we have or even other placements that we have when we can't deal with who we really are. Like we need a boost and we're going to go into that. We're also going to talk about who you are 
underneath that when you take the robe off and you know the mask versus your true character and why we do hide and why we have these things <sighs> all right so get comfortable guys I'm going to talk until I have everything I want to say finished, and then I'm going to end it. So it may go more than usual, but whatever. We got some Pisces in the house. They're our personal favorite. <laughs> Jupiter, which is one of the traditional um, uh, rulers of Pisces. Uh, along with Sagittarius, we see you hiding in the cusp. We got all our earth signs in here, Virgo, Cap, and Taurus. This could be your sun, moon, rising, Venus, most likely sun, moon, riser. I see you guys, or I feel you. We got some Aries up in here. And of course, our water signs, Stinger, Cancer. And our Pisces. Uh, now this is this is going to shift, of course, as more people come in, and whoever is going to dominate the energy, we're going to see your energy come out in the comments. <laughs> oh, this is a month of people telling on themselves, and I just sit back and I watch it because I'm so protected. I'm so protected. I'm so connected with myself that. I just let people tell on themselves. I allow them to pull off the robe. I allow them to bear themselves. And they don't even know that they're doing it. They don't even know that they're dealing with someone who is not a child. And maybe I confuse people because I have a little full face. But when I open my mouth, we want something else. Also, people forget that I have over 12 years of breaking myself down and rebuilding. And what that does is that allowed me to strip all of these indoctrinate beliefs and values that I had prior, things that people had pressed upon me. My whole self-concept about myself had to be rebuilt. I had to become connected with myself, all of myself, my younger self, the self that I didn't like. The self that, you know, I have become, we all are, are connected now. And there was a lot of, lot of work involved. And I believe people just kind of, they're so wrapped up in their intentions. They're so wrapped up in thinking that they're fooling someone that, you know, uh, whatever kind of tricks they have up their sleeve is going to penetrate. But in fact, I have so, so, um, gosh, I have, I have so much energy around me. I have so much protection around me that I don't even have to worry about them. They end up, you know, putting the rope around their own necks. This month has definitely been a revelation in many ways and a test of the universe of who I really am. And this is something we're going to, I'm going to go back and talk about how the universe will test you when you have all this facade going on uh, or, you know, you're in the midst of transformation. So let's talk about why, why everybody should be in now and comfortable. Okay. I already have my carrot juice. So you should be comfortable in the house. So, you know, let's talk about why people brag about having Scorpio placements in their chart. And this has become very big and you can see it. If you go on social media you can go on any platform, any astrology platform, or even tarot platform, where anybody's talking about zodiac signs and somebody wants to boost their ego or put on a show or create an image of themselves that may be more powerful than they actually are. You guys know I don't like fake it till you make it. I like make it till you make it. I don't do fake it till you make it. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to, I don't want to appear to be powerful. I want to be the power. Okay. I want to be the power. I don't want to, I don't want to pretend. I don't want to have to give a facade and then come home 
and strip down and cry myself to sleep or say, oh my gosh, I wish I was really like that. I want to be that, whatever that is. And I'm like that in every dynamic. Like I, you know, I don't wear makeup. I don't cover up. I want the flawless skin that people try to attain by putting on makeup, by using filters and whatever else they're doing. I want to look like that with nothing on. Like I always want to be, I want to be whatever people are trying to attain with their fakeness. I'm like, okay, well, I'm really that. So I don't, we don't have to cover up. I don't like the covering up. It doesn't feel comfortable. I can't deal with myself around here with a mask on. You know, I personally, I can't do it. I don't know how some of you guys do it. Like I can't, I can't, I can't handle that. And so you go to these spaces, you go to these YouTube channels, Instagram, whatever, where they're talking about zodiac signs. And Scorpio is the most popular sign. We are the most prominent in the zodiac as far, not astrologically. Obviously, everyone has their powers, right? As far as popularity, we're the most powerful sign in the zodiac for many, many reasons. And people want to specific people who have not worked on this, themselves, who have not found their personal power, who, who have, have not stepped into the shoes of who they're meant to be. They haven't filled those shoes out. And so they need to grab onto something that they can identify with, okay? They have to have some sort of identity, right? Oh, I belong to this group. I belong to that group. Oh no, I'm not weak. I have a Scorpio moon, which makes me more boom, 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 whatever, right? I have a Scorpio rise. This makes me this. Oh, that's not me. I have a Scorpio ascendant. I have a Scorpio this. I have a Scorpio. It's like there has to be some attachment to this. And you'll see this if you just go through the comments in my videos. Perfect example. Because I think my channel gets more of it because I am a Scorpio platform, period. And so people love to tell me how powerful they are. But the thing is, are you really powerful, right? Are you really powerful? What, is, what does this power mean just because you have a Scorpio placement? What does that mean though? What does that mean? So in my book, I'm Not Crazy, A Guide to Embracing the Dark Side, I talk about Scorpio attributes. And I don't think a lot of people really know what that is. And how do I know they don't know what that is? Because of the feedback and the comments that I get, everything is deranged. Every, I mean, I, you would think they were talking about a Halloween film or a murder mystery in the way that they project this image that people have of Scorpios. Um, there's deranged, there's crazy, there's violent, there's um, every type of mental disorder that you can think of, narcissist, then they go through uh, bipolar disorder, um, every type of disorder, scary, frightening, spooky, right? And so, you know, breaking this down, I'm like, oh, wow, this is interesting because Many, many years ago, decades ago, you just heard kind of like intense, which makes sense because we are fixed water and water is pretty intense. But because we're, our rulers are Pluto and Mars, the destroyers, you could see how we're, we are the intense water sign, unlike Pisces and Cancer. So that I can, that I get. But when you start adding these other things, spooky, scary, frightening, and you get all this stuff, right? These are not characteristics of a Scorpio. They're not. There's nothing spooky about me. There's nothing, there's nothing deranged about me or, or other Scorpios for that matter. And so we start taking these words. And one of my professors in my school, um, you guys know that I study at NCGR, New York chapter, it, she, she had an interesting point in one of her sessions and she reminded us, do not ever connect the sun sign, the planet, and the house. 
They're different things. They're different things. The house, the eighth house, has its own definition. The planet Pluto or Mars has their own definition. And then Scorpio has their own. Because a lot of people will just blend them all together. They'll blend them all together, right? The eighth house is intensity. It is this. It's, that. it's like, no, that's the eighth house. The eighth house is sex, death taxes, other people's money, relationship with other people's money. <laughs> Whew. And so you start pulling out all these words and just blending them together. And now we have this projection of a character that sounds like, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a lie. And why do people do that, though? This is the interesting part. It's not even that they do it. It's not even that they do it, right? Why? What is what is the basis? What is the intent with that? So you get signs, other zodiac signs, or individuals, let's just say individuals, who don't feel powerful. I feel powerful, not because I'm a Scorpio, because I've broken myself down and rebuild. I spent 12 years and continue to do that. So I know who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am. I like who I am. I understand who I am, right? There's a difference between that and, oh my gosh, I want to be this, these different things. Okay. So you get these individuals who don't feel or is not connected to their true power, right? And a lot of them are other zodiac signs. They don't understand what their personal power is, how to identify it, how to use this. I talk, any of you guys who, who has had a master chart reading with me, I break all that down. I tell you what your powers are, how to come into your own, okay? And use what you have. I use everything I have, okay? You never hear me bragging about my Jupiter and Aries or my Saturn and Leo, right? I know I have these things and I know what my advantages are and my challenges are with everything in my chart and I use it, okay? I use it. I don't have to pull and attach to things that really creates this kind of mass so that others can feel some type of fear of me when underneath I know that I have not attained the power that I'm projecting. So you have individuals who feel weak. They feel weak, they feel powerless, right? And so attaching to the strongest sign of the zodiac, attaching these labels that do spark fear in other people. Oh my gosh, they're so intense. Oh my gosh, they're so vengeful. Oh my gosh, they're this, that, and the other, right? And so in doing that, they can hide their scared little selves beneath the walls of, right? Behind the walls of this projected energy. Oh my gosh, I'm not that. I have a Scorpio moon. I'm not that. I have four planets in Pluto. It's like, well, do you, you don't even know what that means. What, do you, what, do you, what does it mean to have four planets in Pluto? Most of these people don't even know. They have no idea whatsoever. They're just reading other people's comments. Oh, yeah, that's me. That's me. That's you. Have you, have you taken the decade to break yourself down on your bill? How do you know that's you? How do you know what you is? When did you do all this? When did you do all of this? soul searching. When did this happen? When? Right? When you were 10 years old? Because you're only 19 now. <laughs> so when did all this happen? When did you take out the time to dedicate decades of finding yourself? Most people have not. This is how I know they haven't done the work. So they don't even understand what they're saying. They don't get it. They're, you're intense. How? How? Talk to me, right? So attaching to something that's powerful, right? And giving this false sense of 
I'm scary, I'm spooky, I'm strong, I'm powerful. When in fact, you haven't even done the work to become that. You haven't done the work. Because if you have, you would rest in your power, whatever that is, whatever that is. And I do get a lot of Pisces who, who spew this, right? Not even knowing that Pisces in itself has their own power. 12th house has its own power. Neptune has its own power. Instead of finding out what that is and utilizing what that is, not really feeling powerful, they want to attach themselves to anything Pluto, Mars, Scorpio. Oh, this is what I did, right? But you're not fooling me because I'm just a girl on the computer screen. When you turn your phones off, when you turn your computers off, you gotta look at yourself. And many of you don't feel so powerful. You do not, because you haven't even put in the work to do that. You don't know who you are, but what you do know is a bunch of words. You know Scorpio rising, you know Scorpio moon, you know Scorpio this, you know Scorpio that, and you hear a bunch of language, oh my gosh, it, it, intense, power, scary. Oh yes, I want to be that so that no one knows underneath that I'm just maybe a coward, that I may be not so brave, that I may be afraid all the time, that I have anxiety, that maybe I don't like myself. Now the thing about that is that you can change that because that's what I did. I didn't fake it until I made it. I figured out a way how to how to get rid of it. Oh, I don't feel so powerful. How do I become that way? How do I how do I dive into who I really am? How do I step into those shoes and feel comfortable? I'm very comfortable in my Scorpio shoes. And I don't have to claim anybody else. I don't have to claim anybody else, right? I don't have to reach for it. I don't have to hide behind it. Oh my gosh, I'm so scary. I have a Capricorn rising. <laughs> okay, that's not scary. None of it is scary to me. None of it. Somebody was like, I have Pluto conjunct my ascendant. I said, nice. Do you even know what that means? Because you're not scaring me. You can't scare a person like me. You may scare someone with your words, and they don't know what that is. Ooh, Pluto. Pluto conjunct ascendant. Ooh, I'm so afraid. When meanwhile, you're afraid. How do you like that? How do you like projecting an image that you don't even know what it is? While meanwhile, you're home scared as you can be. That's a problem. That's a problem. And so this false sense of power is something that I, I'm really uncomfortable with it. Because I like people to have real power. And the real power comes in knowing who you are completely. That means breaking yourself down to the point where you have eradicated, right? All of the false person that has been projected on you. I talk about this in my book and I think I spoke about it a little bit in Rise from the Ashes where, you know, I talk about probably lightly, but my family structure, I talk about it more in this book actually heavily, um, a projected self that I had and that I had to live, live, you know, up to really in order to survive in my environment. I had no choice, but I knew that underneath that's not what I was. Right. And so over the years, living the uh, behind the mask, I had to eradicate that. And it took a long time to do because that person was a part of my journey. And to release her and say, you're not the version of, of me that I'm meant to be. You're a concocted version of the person that I needed to survive in the environment that I grew up in. And now I'm ready 
for the real version of me. Okay, so you got to go because there is no room for two cooks in the kitchen. Now, many people are not brave enough to do that. Why? Because it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a shitload of dedication. And there's tons of outside noise. There's people in your life who you're going to make excuses for to keep in your life. There's people who are going to talk against it. There's people who are going to have a lot to say. There's people you're going to have to rid yourself from. And it sounds easy. It sounds so easy when it's put into words. But when you have to live day to day with people in your face and you're influenced by these people, some of these people you put on a pedestal and you're manipulated by these people and you have decided to live in the way that you want to live with ridicule around you, it's a very challenging thing to do, especially if you're young and you rely on others for validation. You need it. You need your family, you need your friends, and your environment is who you are. It is very, very challenging. I know. I know that. And so a lot of people, instead of doing the work, instead of doing the work, the self-work that it takes, and breaking themselves down, eradicating the old version that is pointless, that is pointless. And how do you know it's pointless? Because you have this knowing on the inside. You have this knowing that is going to keep itching at you. Like, can I come out now? Can I come out now? Like, when, is, when, when are we really going to be us? <laughs> you know? And you have that knowing and you have that, that feeling in there that you're suppressing. You're suppressing. And to be brave enough to let him or her out is going to be a lifelong journey. And a lot of you guys, it's really easy for you to pretend it's, it's easier. It just is. It doesn't take any work to put on a mask. It doesn't take any work to attach yourself to all these words and labels and symbols in order to feel safe. And like you have some power. It's easier to do that than attain the real power. It's easier for a woman to put on Spanx and a wig and lipstick and pretend to be curvy and have a nice body than it is to give up the chips and the soda and the cupcakes and work out every day. It's easier to do that. It's easier to put on, you know, body shapers. It is. It is. It's easier. I know because I exercise every day. I know because I rid myself of my old diet back in 2013 and have been eating plant based and feeling amazing ever since. I know I know it's easier to pretend it is. I see people do it all the time. And when they got to take the bandages off at night and everything falls on the floor then they really got to deal with themselves. It's easier to it's easier to walk around and attach yourself to things and have this great cover. It is. It is. But to actually get in the mirror and say, "Well, you know what? This this really isn't me." I don't feel like that. I don't feel intense and powerful. And this, that, and the other. But I can. And it's going to take some work. It's not going to be today. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be next year. But let me let me figure this out. That takes bravery to do that. To look at, look yourself in the eyes and say, like, okay, this ain't me. How can I get there, though? How can I get there? One step, one foot in front of the other. So in my comment section, there's a plethora of people who want to teach me astrology. Okay. <laughs> they want to teach me about what Scorpio placements mean. And they want me to believe that they are scary and that people are intimidated by them. 
and that they scare people away and they're so powerful. And um, even Scorpios are afraid of them. And I can tell in the conversation that it's actually the opposite. It's actually the opposite. When you're resting in power, it's a knowing. And it's not, you don't even have to, you don't even have to mention it. And also, being powerful is not synonymous with being you know, feared by individuals. Why, if you're so powerful, why are people afraid of you? Why are you intimidating to others? Think about it. Think about the biggest gurus. Think about monks. <laughs> Think about all these spiritual leaders. Are you afraid of these people? Are you? There's a reason why you're not afraid of them. They don't have any intent to make you afraid. People who project false power, they have an intent to strike fear in other people. They want to intimidate because behind that facade is someone who is very afraid themselves. Are you listening? Are you? So when we talk about, are you who you say you are? Because some, some of you guys, you know, you have a whole vocabulary of who you are. I know I do. I have affirmations that I say every single day that I've been saying for over 12 years. And in the beginning, that wasn't who I was. But I am now. We've spoken into existence. And I say it with the utmost confidence. And how do I know that I'm actually these things though? How do I know? Because the universe tests me. The universe will test me every day. Do you guys remember in my other live where I talked about going to the salon and waiting 38 minutes? And the and I never went back, by the way. And the owner was like, oh, have a seat. I'll be back. And went in the back room and shut the door. And I was like, okay, maybe she's going to get some special tools. 38 seconds go by. And I was like, oh, no, we don't get this type of treatment. And it was automatic. It was nothing that I have to plan. It was nothing that, oh, let me time this. And, oh, I don't do that. I'm too good for that. No, I, I am too good for that. I'm worthy. And I've proven that to myself for over a decade. I've proven my worthiness. And so the universe likes to test us once in a while, right? The universe is like, you know what? Oh, you're worthy? You're good enough? Are you really? Or are these just words? Let's see how you behave when somebody goes into the back room and lets your ass sit out there. Are you going to wait? Are you worthy then? What's your automatic, your natural response? Not something... I'm not an analytical person, guys. I'm not. I'm not in my head or none of that shit. I am very emotionally driven and I go by my instincts. I'm not thinking about shit. I'm not sitting to calculate nothing. We don't, I don't do that. And so when I sat down in that chair and I was looking around like, who? Like who? <laughs> who? Oh no, let's get up out of here. That is that was a result of 12 years going from someone who was who would have sat in that chair. I would have sat in that chair over 12 years ago and just waited. Right? But since then, I've broken myself down and I've built self-esteem and worth. I've proven to myself that I'm worthy, that I'm good enough, more than enough. And I have standards of how I'm going to be treated by anyone who wants to be in my life. If you want to be in my life in any capacity, okay, 
you're going to stick within my boundaries no matter what. Now, interesting enough, I went to another salon where we got these done and my feet and my wax and everything else. And I walked in and guess what? It was almost full. Every station was taken and I walked in and the manager jumped up and she says, what can I do for you? And I said, well, you know, I want my nails and my feet done. She says, have a seat right here. I'll get you started. And I took my cute little bag over there and she took my bag from me and put it aside and took my feet and put them up. And she says, I'll be right with you. And somebody was like, well, I don't know. It depends on if you make an appointment. Appointment? What does that have to do with me? What does an appointment have to do with me? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? Uh-uh. This place was busy. And I walked in and she took care of me. Period. I went to the restaurant last night, my favorite restaurant, and it was busy. And I walked in and the guy said, what can I do for you? I said, table for one. And he said, where would you like? I said, well, I can't have people sitting behind me or anything like that. So he got me a table, right? The proper table. And three waiters came back and forth and said, what can I get you, honey? And the woman knew, I don't know, she knew that I'm not into menus. I told you guys, I don't do menus. When I go out with men, they order like my dad used to do. I don't, I can't stand menus. I like things done for me, right? And so I ordered and she, I don't know, she just knew. She says, can I take these menus away? I said, yes, darling. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. And I also have this thing where if I eat a dish and I finish it, I need you to take all of it away and bring me a new fork. Like I don't keep the fork with the next, I don't know. That's just me. Cause she took the dishes. She, she said, she said something about the fork. I said, baby, you go bring me another one. That's how I feel. Okay. We wouldn't have felt like that over 12 years ago. We did not. We would have sat there and be like, okay, because we hadn't built anything. We hadn't built the sense of self. See, this shit takes time. And a lot of you guys, you don't want to put in the work, but you want the results. But you have the fake results. You're like, I'm not going to tolerate that and blah, 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 blah. And then, but you still go home feeling empty. Like you really don't, it, it's not a real sense of feeling valued and that you need to be taken care of. It's not. It's not. I was just on the phone. <laughs> I was just on the phone with someone and this person was like, they're like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm winding down for the night. I just had my carrot juice and I took my bubble bath and my carrot juice and they were like, oh, I'm drinking wine. And they sent me a photograph. <laughs> Excuse me. They sent me a photograph of the wine and it was in a paper cup. And I, we don't do paper cups or paper plates or anything. Like, I'm not going to cookouts or none of that stuff. We're not doing paper or nothing. And I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, wait, you're drinking your wine out of a paper cup? What happened? <laughs> I was like, so I was like, we need to get a glass for your wine because you spent money on your wine, why are you gonna pour it into a paper cup? Like I just didn't, I didn't understand that. And so, <laughs> anyway. <sighs> so the universe will test you in so many ways, in so many ways. This month, I've been tested at least four times. People have come in and out of my life who have done things that were so unsavory. So unsavory. And I'm the type, you guys know, I don't call people out. 
I'm not arguing with nobody. I'm not giving you all my energy when I could be doing things with my energy creatively or spiritually or whatever. I like individuals to sit in their own crap. I like you to take your own uh, mask off and reveal yourself. And it always happens. So all I have to do is lay back and let you talk. And the truth always comes to the surface. So the universe has been testing me in a plethora of ways by sending me individuals who have ill intent. Okay. They have ill intentions. And I'm so protected. I'm so loved. I'm like, I don't even have to worry about it. I don't. I don't. And so they always get blocked out. I don't know what happens to them. Maybe they die. Maybe they move. Maybe I don't know. But they always just disappear from my life and nothing ever works out for them. And so the unsavory things that these people have 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 presented. Right. The universe brought them to be like, oh. So let's see if you are who you say you are. Are you going to forgive them? Are you going to bring them back? Are you going to tolerate it? Are you going to talk to them again? Absolutely not. When I say things, I mean it. I'm not behind the scenes telling lies. I'm not behind the scenes doing the op opposite of what I'm trying to tell you, which works. I'm not doing that. I, I don't accept people back who disrespect me. I don't. I don't do the forgive thing. I just don't do it unless you're a child or an animal. You know what I mean? It's very diff very challenging for me to bring you back when I know who you are already. Like, I get it. I get it. I got you. I got you. I see you for who you are. I see people for who they are, not their potential. I deal with you in real time, in reality. Whatever you show me, I believe it. I believe it. And so I've been passing all of these universal tests, right? Yes, I am who I say I am. Yes, I do demand this. No, you're not coming back. No, I'm not entertaining that. Absolutely not. You're a joke, right? And many of you guys, you don't want to admit that you're not there yet. You may talk, right? But behind the scenes, you're texting people back, you're following them, you're on their Snapchat, so whatever these silly social media things are, you're wondering about them, you're emailing me about them. What about this? What should I do? That's not power. That's not high self-worth. That's not I'm worthy and I'm good enough. It's not any of those things, right? It's not. In trying to intimidate people is not power trying to seem scary and spooky and all these little Halloween, you know, <laughs> these little Halloween characters you want to be. How is that power? How is that power? It's not. It's not. Stepping into your realness, knowing who you are, accepting who you are, loving who you are, and building yourself. That's real power. That's what it is. That's what it is. And so in my book, I don't know if it's in my book. It might have been in, in, in the audio version. I spoke about the Pisces girl that I grew up with and this image that she projected. And this goes back to the whole mass thing, you know? And there was a tour, tourist girl as well who had so much mouth. It, 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 just, it just amazed me. It really did because I knew who she was behind the scenes. This person who cried all the time, who had very low self-esteem, who didn't feel like anybody liked her. And people didn't because she had a, uh, she projected this image, just like this mouthy person who was gossipy because she has a Gemini moon. And people really didn't really like her, you know, and I could see why she was very disloyal. She would talk about somebody and then hang out with them. It would, you could, like, you couldn't trust this person. And so I talk about 
how she never had a fight. And, you know, I think about this sometimes when I see people who have so much mouth and they're like, I will do this and I will do that. And I'm like, but you've never even like had a fight though. Like you, you don't know what it, you haven't had the experience of being punched in the face. You know what I'm saying? Like clock, like, or thrown to the ground or, or being body slammed. Like you've never been in any of those situations. Like, so I'm trying to figure out, I was always trying to figure out how she was like up in people's faces and, and like running her mouth. I'm like, you never, like, I don't, I didn't know where that came from. <laughs> And a Capricorn mentioned it years later. He was like, I, she ain't even never had a fight. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And I was true with the tourist girl who was kind of like a little bit of a bully. She was a bully when we were little. And I, and I, if you've listened to the book, you know that I talk about this. And I was like, what a fucking bully. And actually I spent a night at her house when we became friends, but you guys know I was in, in, infiltrating. And she actually wasn't that bad once she was just boring. Once I became friends, I was actually actually infiltrating at first. And I was like, okay, she's actually okay. <laughs> and the first fight she had, I was literally spending a night at her house. And I was like in her room and she was taking long to come back. And she came back all sweaty. And I was like, what the hell happened? She was like, oh, I was fighting. And I was like, oh, that was her first fight. <laughs> like after years of bullying people, like, that's your first fight? Like, it blows my mind. Just blows my mind, guys. And so, these little characters that you guys like to play around with, and you can go through the comments if you're bored, and you'll see people, you know, pointing out, I'm a Scorpio rising, I'm this, I'm that. And I'm like, you're so many projected things. But well, what's going on, like, when you're alone by yourself? And I, this is almost guaranteed. I don't know these people. And I don't know, some of you may be in here who are doing that too. And I don't know you personally, but I'm almost 100% sure that behind the scenes, your self-esteem is low. You've not built yourself up because it takes too much work. And I know this because I've done it. I don't talk just to hear myself. I don't talk for me because I already know this and I already, I've done it. This is all for you. I'm the giver in this relationship. And so interesting enough, I guarantee you that none of these people really feel as powerful as they want others to think that they do. Especially not even knowing what they're attaching themselves to. I have this, I have that. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that means? Do you? Do you know what that means? Let me read something. I want to read a comment. Let me go back. Hang on a second. Uh, thank you so much. I can't pronounce your name. Um, is it Bax? Thank you for the $4.99. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on a second. I'm going to read a comment to you. It's very long, so I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm going to read some of these comments actually that are, that are, um, under my video. Here's an interesting one. I did I did a I did a video called my least favorite uh, my least favorite to favorite zodiac sign years ago. And someone wanted to make it a point to tell me people don't really understand what Libra really is. The only reason why we keep the peace and harmony is because we know our anger can really um, we know how our anger is. Like there's Somebody else said this to another Libra said that to me. I remember I was working on a set of a film and um, she was telling me how protective her Scorpio, like she was really bragging about it. And I caught her off guard and I said, oh, that's interesting 
that the Scorpio is so protective of you, are you protective of them? And she got so lost and she was like, oh, she didn't know what to say because I caught her off, right? And she was like, well, they fight for me because they know if I really get mad. And I was like, if you really get mad, what? Libra is ruled by Venus. It's the most relaxed planet you can get. It really is. Venus likes to play. Venus likes to have fun. Venus can even make you lazy if you have too much Venus energy. It can make you lazy. You don't want to fight anyone. You don't. You want everything cool, peaceful, right? You don't want the last thing a Libra wants to do is fight somebody. So... We don't understand you because you can get really what? Who are you talking to? You can get really what? Here we go. Here is... Now, I gave you guys a lot to think about. And when I get off this live, I want you to think about how you're representing yourself, how you're talking about yourself, what you're attaching yourself to, and why. Why? Why? How come? Think about why you're attaching. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be astrology related. It could be religion. You know, I had a friend, a, a Leo, a Leo friend in college who had a Scorpio moon and a Scorpio rising and no, she was not scary. I was not intimidated by her. And I told you, I think I mentioned her a couple of times. Me and her went toe to toe a couple of times. Not really because she backed off of me because, because she just did. Different people, honey. Different upbringings, different levels. You know, she wasn't willing to go all the way to the edge and jump. And I was. And she, I remember her a uh, couple of years after college making her transition to Judaism. And her father was a Jewish guy and her mom was a Catholic. And she wanted to have that attachment to Judaism because it brought her some type of power in community, you know? And I want you guys to... Think about why you attach yourself to certain things because it makes you feel more power in, in lieu of going deep within and getting the inner power in here. The inner power. Where is that? All right, listen to this comment. This is under my video, Why Some Scorpios Don't Get Along With Cancers. I'm a cancer and, and the Scorpios in my life love my personality. I don't know where she's getting this from. I don't know what confirmation that she has. Usually if you're the one that's always around other people, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm just throwing it out there. My husband has a Scorpio moon. So he's not a Scorpio. He's a Scorpio moon, but she makes it, you know, uh, prevalent that this is his placement. And my closest co-worker has a Scorpio son. My ex-husband is a Scorpio son as well. And he's still bitter about me leaving him. These are all, in, these are all, when, when you guys write, and I don't want you to be self-conscious about it because your writing and your learning ability is your Mercury, right? Mine is in Libra. Obviously I'm an artist. It's ruled by Venus, so I, I think in a very artistic way. I think in a very artistic manner, the way I put things together. And it's an air sign, so we all know that I'm kind of floating. This is why I go around and come back. <laughs> when some of you think I'm lost, never that. So her um, co-worker, her ex-husband, you know, she... she she, she wants me to know that he's bitter and that she left him. That was the point of her writing that. I left him because he was too possessive and controlling. Controlling clingy are the exact words, right? He literally wanted me to take care of him like his mother did. Okay. 
Well, I like men to take care of me like my father did. I like them to cut up my food, to pull out, pull out my chair, to run and open the door, to order my food. And if there's something wrong with my food, to bring it back to and to pay the bill and just take care of the whole process. And that's the end of it. And that's what my father used to do. So I don't see the problem. I agree with what you said about cancer traits, but here we go. I don't know why someone's sun sign is the only thing you consider in relationships and compatibility. First of all, that's not true. And if you watch my channel, if you're here, if you watch my channel and it seems like you've been binge watching my videos, because I see a lot of your comments, you, you would know that I don't just consider someone's sun sign when I do compatibility. And um, hang on, because she's going to try and teach me some astrology right now. There's so many aspects than just your sun sign. First of all, um, your sign is not an aspect. <laughs> Astrology 101. Okay, aspects are trines, squares, oppositions, quincunks. Okay, these are aspects. So what else is she saying? There's so many other aspects just, I, uh, other than your sign. I can be a clingy... Um, cancering, but my Leo rising mellows out that aspect. Look at, look at the attachment. Can't just deal with the fact that she's a cancer. And what is the power in the cancer? What is the power of the moon? What is the power of the fourth house? She has to cling to Leo. And first of all, your Leo on the ascendant does not mellow out anything. So already she's showing me that she doesn't know astrology. She doesn't know the function of the ascendant. She doesn't know what Leo means. She doesn't know what any of this means. I also have a Taurus midhaven. Now this, this is the shocker. Because I love when people come in and want to tell me about my studies. I also have a Taurus midhaven, which makes people not just appreciate and want my mothering nature, but they expect it and ask for it. So your midhaven has absolutely nothing to do with your personal one-on-one -on -one relationships, period, the end. Absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing whatsoever. Your midhaven is your career, okay? That's how you're seen at large. What You can look at someone's midhaven and tell what they're going to be known for as far as their career is concerned. That's, that's what you can tell. And you look at the planets and that'll give you a little more uh, uh, details. I have a Scorpio Midhaven, right? And I Uranus is my most elevated planet. So what does that tell you? I'm known for Scorpio type things. And Uranus means unusual. So then you get someone, right? Like me, was a Scorpio Midhaven. We're going to be dealing with probably occult things. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be what I'm doing right now. But that's the Uranus. Uranus rules Aquarius. That's astrology. So it makes sense for me. But some people with Scorpio Midhavens are scientists. They could be investigators. They could be um, surgeons, or you know anybody dealing with. They could be undertakers. They could, it depends, but because my Uranus is my most elevated planet, that will tell you that it's something unusual, right? Something that may be dealing with um, something other people don't understand or something that is a little out there. That's where my astrology comes in, okay? Your midhaven has nothing to do with your personal one-on-one -on -one relationships. And I called somebody else out about this. When somebody did a tried to do a clapback video about me, and she's like, I have a Capricorn Midhaven. I'm like, and what's your point? My Midhaven is Scorpio. My North Node is also Scorpio. What are we talking about? Okay. So this person having a Taurus Midhaven, right? Does not have anything to do with a mother in nature. She has a Taurus Midhaven. So maybe, you know, she it's ruled by Venus. So Taurus Midhaven, she's probably works. She's probably an artist of some sort. She can be a makeup artist, a hairstylist, a designer. 
something of that nature, something of beauty. She could be working a flower shop. She could have a business, you know, um, maybe as a stylist. That's what that means. It has nothing to do with one-on-one. So don't please don't come in my platform trying to teach me. And if you are, know what the F you're trying to teach me. Know what you're talking about. Period. And attaching to Leo does not make you look powerful. Okay? Learn what cancer is. Become, step into the shoes of that. Step into the shoes of that. Okay? My Leo mellows out and your Leo doesn't mellow shit out. Because when you get home, you're, you're, you're a cancer. And this is why you got five different comments under my videos about all your Scorpios. You think that's Leo? Leo is regal. Leo is proud. They would never come out and start whining like that. They would be too ashamed. They're authoritative as well. They would be too ashamed to do that on my, on my platform. When Leos get in my comments, they don't sound like that. <laughs> they don't. They don't. You will never see a legal drop, Leo drop like that. They're too, even if they feel it, they're too proud. Okay. Hang on a second. You don't need to lie to me. I want you guys to build yourself up like really you know what i'm saying i want you to feel fabulous without all of hoopla shit i hate it i hate it I hate that shit and you got to call, you got to bring somebody else in. That's how you know you're not in your power. When you got to, oh, wait a minute. I've got a, uh, I got a Mercury in Libra. Like I tell you that so that you can understand my thinking process, my conscious thinking process. My moon is in Scorpio. So I'm automatically going to go to Scorpio. Right. But if I'm actually studying or I have to think it's conscious, it's all Libra. It's Libra energy, which is what artistic words. This is why I talk about relationships so much. Libra's what? Rules the seventh house of serious partnerships. It's what I do, right? Relationships with yourself. This is what I want you to have. I don't want you to be, you know, phony on here. I have a Leo. Why are you bringing Leo into this? Why? Because you want more clout. But I have Leo. Why can't you why can't you be in your power as a cancer? Tell me that. And here's someone else who who wants me to know. Hang on a second. Wait, wait, wait. That's not the right comment. There was somebody who wanted me to know that. They had a Taurus best friend and their Taurus was so trustworthy. Good for you. Good for you. Why not? Why can't you have a Taurus best friend? If that's what you like, that's what you like. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But don't try and prove to me that, that it's not true that Taurus and Scorpios are in opposition. They're always going to have that push and pull. Taurus are materialistic individuals. Their earth signs, their second house, that's what they do. And because the word materialistic has a bad connotation, they try and separate themselves instead of stepping into those shoes and knowing that we're, we live in a material world. Landlord don't want to hear about your spiritual awakening. They want the damn money. And we all need to work. We all need money. We all need food. We all need security. We all need clothes. That's what the second house is. Money, you earn your shit. Okay. And Taurus is all about it, honey. And that's the end of it. So you don't need to tell me like, oh, the Taurus that I know is it material. Yes, they are. And they're supposed to be all the earth signs are. So give it up. Why are you trying to prove something to me? Get in your mirror. And here is someone 
under my video of how Scorpio feels after they cut you off saying, I'm waiting for my Scorpio to return with their vengeance. Maybe I can, maybe I could stop it by talking to them about the good times we've had. No, that's not going to work because clearly the good times weren't that great or you he wouldn't have cut your ass off. How you like that? He wouldn't have cut you off if it was so great. Okay. So you're waiting to get stung. Why? Some of these, I swear. Um, oh. All right, guys, I have an interesting question, and I, I want to talk more about this. And I think I mentioned it a little bit. This was under the video that I've done actually way back when I first started my channel. 2013, Cancer and Scorpio Relationship. And somebody, somebody asked, how does this work with the dynamic of two men? Well, this is really interesting because astrology is just like any other study is evolving. And I don't think a lot of individuals have really studied homosexual relationships. I had be, uh, began with a professor that I had last year with a lot of that. And we did make some progress with, you know, kind of noticing similarities in um homosexual individuals. Uh, but of course, my studies are not in depth enough to be so concrete about that. But, you know, there's some things that I can look for, for sure. So this person says, you know, it's more, it's complex because they're a Scorpio. He's a, they're a Cancer. He's a Scorpio. And, um, you know, the Scorpio says they stung the Cancer pretty bad, but, you know, this person hurt them too. And now they're living rent free in their head. Cause you know, they can't stop thinking about them and this, that, and the other. And, um, and then they claim like, you know, I don't think I can ever replace them. I disagree with that. And I'm going to tell you this, and I know this for a fact, and you're not going to think about it. You're not going to believe it now because you're in the hurt. You stung somebody, they disrespected you. That's your natural mechanism, honey. Don't be sad about it. Don't be, you know, don't feel no kind of ways about it. Okay. They was running their mouth too. So, and believe me, when I tell you this, if you're hurting, that other person is hurting 10 times is worse because Scorpios, we leave this heavy stain on people, heavy, heavy, heavy. So if you feel in that way, imagine how they feel, especially as a cancer person. So listen to this. You don't think you can replace them. Untrue, untrue. Every person is replaceable. And I'm going to tell you why because you evolve. So when people say that, when people claim, you know, like, oh my gosh, um, I don't want to lose this person. I can't replace, there'll never be another them. Well, you don't want another them because you're going to be different in the process. Every relationship chips at you in different ways and, and, and you build those muscles back. You build those little bones or whatever was chip. You build them back in different ways. So you don't, you're not even going to want that person anyway. Okay. Everybody can have a replacement, everybody. And I mean, every, like I've been in, I've been in a few relationships where I thought like that was it and blah. Are you kidding? Like I laugh at that now. I write about it in my books, <laughs> the jokes. Are you kidding? Ill. I don't ever want them back. Of course they can be replaced. Of course that you want to, you want to, you know? And so you're just feeling that way now and time you'll get over it. I, I promise you, it's not even maybe. It's not even maybe. Don't worry about them living rent free, honey. You charging them because they home, they home paying the bills, crying themselves to sleep. And you, you, you go work on yourself, break down and rebuild. All right, guys. Those I just wanted to mention those comments. I'll save the others for our next live. So yeah, everybody. I you know I just wanted to come through because I've been seeing a lot of this energy. Everybody's trying to pull somebody. Like you want to attach yourself to something that you deem as powerful, right? Whether it was the Leo in college who 
ran to Judaism, was like, oh, I'm going to convert. I've always wanted to convert. Was never into religion, but saw there was some authority or power in that. So there she goes, right? <laughs> That's her business. Or the cancer trying to, oh, but I have a Leo this. Instead of stepping into those cancer shoes and finding the power in that. And millions of people will comment with their Scorpio placements, trying to pull some power. And, and, and you don't realize that you're diminishing who you really are in the midst. In the midst, you're giving, you're telling your subconscious, we're not good enough. We need to, we need to, you know, attach on to that so that people think we're scary and people think we're intense and people think, and then you meet someone like me where I'm not even phased by that shit. You don't scare me. What can you scare me with? Oh, my eyes scare you. Your eyes scare me? How? Because I see what's behind them. And what's behind them is a person who hasn't developed themselves. So you're only afraid of yourself, which is why you need to attach to these other things instead of going the difficult route, the most rewarding route, which is breaking yourself down and becoming, you know, like I became who I wanted to be. I changed my diet. I changed my body. I changed my mentality. I changed my self-concept. So when I step into the world and even when I'm by myself, I, I feel the power of these things. I know it. It's not I think. It's no, I know. And so my behavior is a reflection of that. You know, when I walk in a space and I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for somebody to take care of me. That's that's 12 years worth of work. That's what it is. That's what that is. That's just, you know, manifestation of it. That's what it is. And if I don't get it, we got to go. Let me get out of here. Let me get out. It's not, not the right spot for me, not the right person for me, not the right situation for me. That's what it is. And it, it's, and it's a knowing it's not, well, it all depends. It depends on what. I'm worthy and I'm good enough. Well, it depends on what. If you're in, still in the stage of it depends, you're not there yet because it will be automatic. Boom. Let me get out of here. Let me get this. We're not pouring wine in a paper cup. We're not doing that. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. I'm not going to wear ugly clothes to bed with, I just buffed my skin. This is, um, somebody thought this was a dress. This is actually a jumpsuit and it's very low. So I'm not going to stand up, but it's short and it has ruffles around the sides <laughs> and it's pretty short. And the back is crisscross and I have it in like a flushy pink color as well. So yeah, so I'm not going to take care of my skin and then put on something shitty on top of it. Like I just, we don't feel good about that. You know what I mean? I don't feel good about it. If you're comfortable with it, that's your comfortability. It's not mine. It's not my comfortability. It's not my comfortability. That's it. It's as simple as that. So I don't like fake it till you make it, guys. We're going to make it till we make it. And how do you do that? Proving to yourself little by little. Proving it. And the universe will test you. You're going to get people in your life who talk shit to you, who call you out your name, who disrespect you. Are you going to call them back? Are you going to answer their texts? Are you going to follow them on social media? Are you going to respond to their bullshit emails? What are you going to do? Because that's a test. You, you know, you're, you're going to train your subconscious that, look, we're not good enough. Oh, well, we have no other friends. Let's forgive her. Oh, well, mate, your, your subconscious is going to come in with so many excuses to pull you back to where it was. Mine automatically says, let's get the hell out of here. You're not right for me. You're not right. I need a new fork with that. I need this to be hot. I need this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like, no. Nope. It's not even, it's not even a conversation. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about whether I have an appointment or not, or that, or maybe that maybe like, what are you talking? Like I'm here. I've arrived. Do something. Somebody do something. <laughs> That's how I felt. Like everybody come out, you know, do, do something. 
When I walk in the store and it's quiet, I'm like, anybody working? This is what I do. I start clapping. Wake up. Go on. Wake up. Welcome to the shop. Thank you. Like, what the hell is going on? Would not have done that 12 years ago. Would not have done it. But I had some excuse. Well, maybe they're tired. And no, so get, no, 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 no. And these are little tests, guys. The universe is testing you all the time because some of you are not who you say you are. You got a lot of mouth on social media. You're running your mouth. But guess what? You're still calling him back. He's still coming over. You're still like, oh, does he like me? Does he like you? He's never taking you out. He's never, he doesn't care. He doesn't call you unless it's one o'clock in the morning, sending you naked pictures and stupid shit like that. Somebody sent me a picture tonight with them with no shirt on. I didn't mean to comment on the picture. I comment on the fact that they had wine in a paper cup. <laughs> Why are you sending me a picture with no shirt on when you drink any wine out of a paper cup? I said, baby, what are you doing? I didn't even, I didn't mention the picture at all. I, I think I just sat on their ego, sat right on it. Like, boom, it was no, like, I don't, first of all, I don't get turned on with men with no shirts on. You know what I'm saying? You you guys know I like them corny dudes. <laughs> so anybody trying to be sexy, leave that to the women. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like pictures of you in your underwear. You and your, Like, I don't like that. I'm not turned on by that shit, right? You want to turn me on, send me a picture of your stocks or your, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> your stocks and bonds. Like, I'm not, leave, let the women be sexy. I don't like when men try and get sexy and shit in pictures. Like, ill. Like, that. I don't like that at all. I got a Venus in Virgo. Like, I'm not impressed by that shit. I'm, I'm wondering why you drinking your wine and you just came from a hard day's worth of work and you took your shower and, you know, and you laying on the couch and you got a paper cup in the house. I don't know. I don't know why you buy paper cups. I just, I, that lost me. Forget the shirt off. You know, guys, guys, <sighs> I I can't, I can't, I can't. All right. Um, somebody asked how long ago the live start or the live's about to end, <laughs> but we have, um, gone a little bit past. But I wanted to say everything that I wanted to say, you know, a lot of you guys are hiding behind, projecting this fake power. And I don't want you to have fake power. I want you to have the real deal. When all the lights go off and nobody's home, how are you feeling about yourself? Right? How are you feeling? What are you good enough for? What are you worthy of? How do you move through life in a worthy way? How do you do that? You know? Denouncing disrespect. Oh, okay. You're going to disrespect me. You're not going to be in my life. And then there's no excuses. You're not calling them back. You're not making excuse. Oh, I forgive them for me. All that stupid saying that people say that you don't even know. You're just repeating it. You have strict boundaries and feel no kind of ways about it. I have boundaries. And everybody I know stays within them or they get cut off. And that's the end of the story. And there's nothing to talk about. Not one thing. If you want a relationship with me, I have rules. Speaking of which, I'm going to be on my channel, No Makeup Needed. Oh my gosh, I'm dying to talk about this. Dying to talk about it. A young lady posted a TikTok. And I'm not on TikTok. By the way, speaking of TikTok, there are two users. I don't have a TikTok account, but I went on to like look at something. Actually, I went on to create one. And two people have taken my name. Yes. And I don't know how to contact them. I did report it. I do have a, uh, you know, a legal rights to my name. 
I have a trademark. <laughs> I have a trademark for a few names that people are stealing. So I don't, you know, somebody has Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon on TikTok. That is not me. And someone has Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon. They spell it with a number one on TikTok. And they're just making videos. And that's problematic for me. So if you know them, you just warn them for me. Warn them. They have to take, they have to change all that shit. So anyway, there's a young lady, and I think this video is going viral. I'm going to talk about it on No Makeup Needed uh, because it refers to beauty. And it also refers to, you know, I don't know, putting up fronts, masks, and people's opinions, and how you feel about yourself and your worth, you know. And um, I pro I'm probably going to record that tomorrow if I can. I have a lot to do tomorrow, but I'm trying to get, get it to, to uh, the page tomorrow about self-worth. There's a lady who uh, posted her requirements for a boyfriend and everybody went nuts. They went nuts. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Listen, I have requirements and I know where I, I fall into different scales and we all do as far as society is concerned. And sometimes you get what you want and sometimes you don't. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about standards and shifting your standards if necessary or how to get what you want or if everybody's worthy of what they want sometimes people act like you're not worthy of what you want oh i want to be a millionaire oh how dare you blah 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 blah. they got so much mouth it's like well wait how come other people can do it but um i don't have the worth to do it so we're gonna we're gonna dive into that as well okay all right guys let me get out of here. It's past midnight. It's past your bedtimes. <laughs> it's past your bedtimes. Um, there was a lot unpacked tonight. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about, isn't the house connected to the sign? They're still separate. The house means separate things. The sign means separate things. The planet means separate things. Okay? For instance, Pluto and Mars... Let's say Scorpio's originally ruled by Mars. That's the original um, ruler of Scorpio. Pluto was discovered in 1930. Okay. And so Mars is destruction, right? Mars is a destroyer. It's a planet, um, you know, it, it's the most violent planet. Mars is the planet of war. The eighth house is not the house of war. Do you see the difference? You don't connect, you don't combine the two. They're separate. And you have to know the planets from the signs from the houses. Different. Okay. It's a different thing. Yeah. So I want you guys to, you guys have a lot to think about. And some of you may be doing this stuff and you don't even realize it. Attaching yourself to shit that ain't, good. why? Why? For what? Hmm. Whew. This is, you know, this is, this is tough, guys. Nobody said life was easy all the time. Nobody said it. But you can break yourself down and rebuild into the most powerful version of you. You can do it, and I know you can do it. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. It's not even me. Not even a maybe. And trying to hide, it's all gonna come out. It's all gonna come out. And I just let it come out. I stay quiet and I let it unravel. I let the mess unravel. I'm like, look at you, look at the mess that you just made. The mess. All right, guys.
All right, let me see who's not behaving in here. Well, we're almost finished. I don't know who's not behaving. Oh my gosh. <laughs> People don't know how to act. Um, if you just came in, you just watched this over on YouTube, watch the whole thing from the beginning. There's a lot in here and there's a lot you could take away. And I want you guys to start working on yourself. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. I'll see you at ScorpioSunScorpioMoon.com where you all should have my book. Rise from the Ashes, the Scorpio's Guide to Self-Esteem and Rebirth. I go through, four, give you a 45-day diet on how to break yourself down. And I want you to be brave enough to do it and stop walking around with this fake shit going on. It's terrible. It's embarrassing. It's terrible. And it chips away at your self-esteem because you know behind the scenes it's not that's not you. You know that's not you. We talked about this before. Okay? And this way you don't have to attach yourself to hide behind things. Oh, I have a nail rising. Meanwhile, Leo's over there minding their business, but you got to reach for them because you don't feel powerful in your own shoes. Okay. And so uh, you can get my paperback and my audiobooks, Dating Scorpio. I'll take you through 14 different relationships. And it, I, I show you all of my stages, like it's clear as a bell. All of the things that I tolerate, all of the things that, you know, when I had low self esteem, all of the things that I used to envelop myself in, that I used to entertain, it is hilarious to go back and see that. But to see the growth is amazing. So the audiobooks do have an extended at the end. I talk about how I created it, you know, and I give you more stories. So you'll get that in the audiobook. I have nine amazing crash courses like Dating Scorpios that will give you the basics so that you, you don't run into all these messy situations that a lot of you guys do with Scorpios. Then what's going on? You don't even know the basics of astrology. You know, someone wants to come on and tell me that the sun sign is an aspect. Oh! <laughs> Fire your professor wherever you study, right? At the you know bubblegum university of astrology, uh, I have amazing crash courses. I have a love spell. I have an incredible um, affirmations MP3 download that is meant for nighttime. I do affirmations night, morning, all day, all day long. I'm, I'm in the mirror, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> you know, especially if it's a challenging day. I, oh, honey, all day long. All day long, we're just spewing words out, journaling and everything else. And so I have a journal healing kit, which comes with Palo Santo, my two favorite stones that I always carry, which is rose quartz and onyx for protection always. I go nowhere without them. You can get that on my site. I have amazing jewelry, like the Phoenix and, and the Stinger um, necklace. I have a ton of necklaces. All the sale items are an additional 40% off by using code Real Scorpio. I am going to have a 4th of July sale, so look out for that. You can book a chart reading with me, a master chart reading, if you're wondering what all this stuff is. A lot of people just don't know how to read their chart, what to look for, what it, what it means. Like, they hear all these words, but they can't connect it. They can't connect the story. They don't know what the hell it means to have Pluto in the seventh house. They don't know what it means to have Pluto in the MC or whatever. They don't know. So I break all that down. I talk about your superpowers. I tell you what it is. You don't leave the reading without me telling you what your challenges are, your career, your relationships. I tell you who your karmic individuals are, best matches, all that stuff. We do like a whole complete uh, things so that you know what type of Scorpio you are and all that stuff or whatever sign you are. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, you can book a personal live stream session. Uh, you get 30 minutes with me. We go in, everything gets resolved in that 30 minutes. Trust me. And what else is happening on my website? I have exclusive videos. I am... I'm going to be over at Scorpio Sun Scorpio Moon podcast soon. I have something I want to record. It's just time consuming because I have a lot going on. I don't have a launch date for my new book yet. It's probably going to be the end of July. I'm shooting, I'm doing, working on the project right now, something else. So um, next week and beyond is going to be really busy for me. But I will announce uh, my new book and any other um, special things that I have for you guys. 
All right. Whew. I am going to um, get ready for bed. <laughs> All right. I'll see you soon. Bye.